Hello, and welcome to this video on designing and editing GDS files. In this video, we're going to have a look at K-Layout's P cells, or parametric cells. As their name suggests, these cells have an additional set of parameters that we can modify to change the cell's behavior. The one way that we can create these cells is to instance them, just like we've done in the past. If I click the Instance button at the top here, in the past we've been accessing the local library. This refers to the cells that we've already created in our layout. When I click the three dots here, I see the list of cells that we've already created. In this case, there's just one because this is essentially an empty layout. What I'm interested in this time is not the local library, but the basic library. This is a set of P cells that's built into K layout that we can use and add to our design. When I now click the three dots, you can see this list of P cells we can look at. We're going to look at a few of them today, but let's start with the circle. When I click OK, we're brought back to this instance menu that we've seen before where we can adjust the scaling factor, the rotation, uh, whether we want to make an array of this instance. But in addition, we now have the P cell tab. When I click this tab, we get a few more options. These are the parameters that we can edit for this P cell. We can specify its layer. Let's put it on layer 1, the layer we've created, and adjust its radius up to 1 micron. When I click OK, I now have this circle that I can place just like I would at any other instance. So we can make multiple copies of it on our layout, and if I go down the hierarchy, you can see these circles I've created. Going up the hierarchy, you can see that when we, in the information about the cell, it tells its layer, its radius, and its number of points. When we click on this cell, we can again open the instance menu, where we can edit any of these values again. So if I increase the radius, I make the circle larger. In addition, we have the number of points here. And so in, we have to remember that there's no such thing as a true circle in a GDS file. It's just a multi-sided polygon. The larger the number of points, the kind of better representation it is of a circle. But at some point, uh, you're not really gaining that much. 64 is a really good number. If I turn it down to something low, like H, you can clearly see it's now just an octagon, uh, which wouldn't be a good uh, representation of a circle. But if you have many, many of them, maybe you'd need to do something like that. Let's turn it back up to 64. There we go. The other feature of these P cells is the handle. You can see this black dot on the side. This is a handle we can move to change the parameters of the P cell. If I go to move and I click on the dot on the side and drag it around and click again, I've increased the circle by so such that the uh, outer edge of the circle still goes through that handle. I can move it kind of wherever I want to change the radius of the circle. And you'll see the parameters here in the cell list or in the cell description here have changed. The radius has changed to kind of a long floating point number because I've put the, uh, the point such that the radius is equal to that number. So let's have a look at some of the other P cells that we have available now, other than just the circle. We'll go back to instance, click on these three dots. You can see we also have donuts and ellipses. Those are very similar to circles. The donut adds a cutout in the middle, a circular cutout, where you can adjust the outer and inner radius to change the shape of that donut. The ellipse is a circle whose axes we can uh, edit independently, so we can make the x and y axis different to stretch it out and make an ellipse. The arc and pi are segments of a circle. So if I click on pi, we have the same parameters for a circle, layer, radius, and, and number of points, but in addition, a starting and ending angle. This allows you to define kind of a wedge or pi out of your circle. Let's look at some of these uh, other cells at the bottom. Let's look at the rounded polygon. A round polygon. If I click this, click OK, it's got the exact same parameters as we had for the circle. Let's specify the layer as 1 and the radius as 1 and click OK. And now let's place this somewhere over here and we can see it just looks like a circle, which is not all that interesting to start with. The main power of these rounded polygons comes from applying the P cell to a shape that we've already created in our layout. Let's see how that works. We'll go ahead and delete this one. Zoom out a little bit, and let's go ahead and create a polygon. So just using the polygon tool, and of course selecting a layer on the right-hand side. Draw an arbitrary shape here. Now I'm going to select that shape, go over to the Edit menu, Edit Selection, and at the bottom I'm going to convert it to a P-cell. In this case, I could again see a part of that basic library list that we saw before, and if you selected circle or donut or ellipse, it would take kind of the bounding box of that shape and apply an appropriately sized circle or ellipse. What we want to do is select rounded polygon to see how that works when we apply it to a shape. 
So we'll select that and click OK. And you can see that the points of the polygon have now been rounded over and with that uh, radius of curvature being set equal to the radius that we specify for the p-cell. This shape is still the same polygon. I can still edit it by clicking on the points just like I would a normal polygon. I can change any of these values here. So if we make this uh, 3, apply and OK, you can see it's kind of flattened that edge out as it brought that point down. But I can also edit the p-cell parameters. If I click on this cell here, I can pull up this menu where I can edit the radius and the number of points. If we make this radius much larger to kind of exaggerate the effect, click OK and go back down the hierarchy, you can see how these have become significantly more rounded over since we've increased the radius. Uh, so this really lets you make some interesting shapes by combining the polygon with this rounded uh, p-cell. Let's look at another one of those. Uh, let's create another uh, polygon up here. This time we're going to have a look at the stroked polygon. We select it, go to Edit, Selection, Convert to P-Cell. We select Stroked Polygon. This one takes our polygon and essentially makes the outline of it. It's kind of making a path that follows the polygon. Again, we can edit the shape of the polygon itself or edit the parameters of the P-Cell. Here we can specify width, and we can also round the corners here as well. If I decrease the width, that path gets thinner but still maintains the overall shape of the original polygon we created but can be edited later on. The last p-cell I want to show you is the text p-cell. In the past, we have talked about text, and I said that most lithography tools cannot expose a normal text object, and that's still true. So if I go to the top menu here and select text, I can enter something like this is text, and we'll make it a little bit smaller so it's more easily visible. And we can add this to our layout, and we're going to add two copies. So the text in this form is still a text object and will probably not be exposable by a lithography tool. Instead, we need to convert it into a set of polygons uh, because the tool knows how to expose a polygon. If I select this bottom text here, I'm again going to do the same thing we did before, edit selection, and at the bottom convert to p-cell. And not surprisingly this time, we don't have access to a lot of those p-cells we had before. A circle and a polygon wouldn't really make sense here. We just see the basic text library. If I click OK. You can see this is converted, and it's, each of these uh, letters of the text now has some width to it because it's been converted into a polygon. I can still edit this text if I click on it. I have these p-cell parameters like before, and one of them is the text, so I could say this is uh, a p-cell. And we can edit the magnification still. So it's still very editable text, but it's actually exposable now in a lithography tool, which is a great benefit. So you should really uh, avoid these normal text objects and go for these piece converted p-cell objects if you want to add text to your devices.